Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, one thing I've noted in each of the uh, questions that have been answered so far is the questioners have begun by uh, expressing appreciation to your uh, respective agents for the work that they do. I, uh, I think I, I certainly speak for myself, and I believe I speak for all the members of the Senate that I've spoken with, uh, and it probably includes almost all, which is there is a very profound appreciation for the, the sacrifice and the extraordinary professionalism of the men and women who serve in your respective agencies. And I hope that that is uh, uh, expressed to your, your members time and time again. Uh, uh, Mr. Glaway, uh, you spoke about four nations in particular that try and uh, interfere with uh, our, our sense of unity in the country, our political process, our elections, uh, Russia, China, North Korea, um, and, and Iran. Uh, can you, can any one of you give me a, a uh, if you will, kind of a rough sense of uh, is this is this an ad hoc process that goes on within their country, or is it organized by their governments and staffed by a certain number of people with a budget associated with it? And if it is organized, do we have a sense of the scale of the enterprise that's undertaken by by these each of these countries to interfere with our election process, to th sow disunity through social media and the like? Well, I, I think there might be more that we could say, you know, in classified setting on that. But what I, I would say is that uh, all of those countries have uh, designs uh, in engaging in malign foreign influence in this country. Of them, uh, the Russians are the ones who have most uh, advanced this idea of sowing divisiveness and discord, the pervasive messaging campaigns, uh, false personas, things like that. But certainly, Iran, we know, is taking very careful note of what the Russians have done and has its own malign foreign influence efforts, uh, some of which have a cyber dimension to them, uh, and it's something we're tracking very carefully. And of course, the Chinese, that's a whole other uh, kettle of fish, as it were, uh, and they have a very robust foreign influence effort here, but it's a different, uh, they all have their own uh, shapes and sizes to the problem. But it's highly organized by each of their respective governments. It's not just something that's done uh, on an ad hoc basis. I think that's a fair statement. Yeah. yeah. Um, as you spoke, uh, uh, Director Ray, about the, uh, the incursions on an hourly basis of, of Chinese in particular, but as well as other countries into our corporate databases, our government databases, and so forth, um, I thought about how impossible the task must be to try and protect all the places people can attack. And, and I was reminded of the uh, mutual assured destruction uh, orientation that was, was part of our uh, national security with regards to nuclear weapons. Uh, should we have a, a mutually assured disruption effort of some kind, which is to say, um, uh, is the only way to prevent the number of attacks and the severity of attacks that we're seeing a, a, an indication that we can do the same thing to them, uh, only we can do it harder and bigger and more destructively such that they say, okay, we better stop or we're going we're gonna to suffer as well? Well, I don't know if I would say that's the only way. I think offensive cyber operations are an important part of any nation's uh, cyber strategy, and it is ours. Uh, we are uh, working much more closely with the private sector than ever before uh, in terms of trying to help them defend themselves and our relationships with the, uh, with businesses ranging from small startups all the way to Fortune 100 companies are much more robust uh, than I when I was in this world when I was at DOJ, you know, many years ago. Um, and in many ways, today's cyber threat is less about, uh, and cyber security is less about preventing the intrusion in the first place, although that's obviously the goal, and more about detection as quickly as possible and mitigation as quickly as possible once you find it. Think of the example, it's, it's great to put locks all around the outside of your house and cameras and lights and everything else, but if the guy's already managed to pay off somebody to get inside your basement and he's just hanging out there, all the stuff on the outside isn't gonna do a whole lot. So a lot of the efforts today working together with DHS and others are trying to get organizations to be able to quickly find the threat, quickly tie it off and prevent the damage from getting worse. And just one question, and perhaps for any one of you or all three of you, and that relates to cryptocurrency. I'm not on the banking committee. Uh, I don't begin to understand how cryptocurrency works. Uh, I would think it is more difficult to carry out your, your work uh, when, when we can't follow the money because the money is, uh, is hidden from us. 
uh, and, and wonder whether there should not be some kind of effort taken in our nation to deal with cryptocurrency and the, the uh, challenges that that prevents for law enforcement and for uh, d deterrence of, of terrorist activity. Am I, am I wrong in thinking this is an area we ought to take a look at, or, or is cryptocurrency just not a big deal as, as it relates to your respective responsibilities? Well, certainly uh, for us, cryptocurrency is already a significant issue, and we can project out pretty easily that it's going to become a bigger and bigger one. Uh, whether or not that is the subject of uh, appropriate subject of some kind of regulation as the response is harder for me to speak to. Uh, we're looking at it from an investigative perspective, including tools that we have to try to uh, follow the money, even in this new world that we're living in. Uh, but it is part of a broader trend, and Director Travers alluded to it uh, in terms of the terrorist threat, in terms of our adversaries of all shapes and sizes uh, becoming more facile with technology, and in particular, various types of technology that anonymize their efforts, whether it's cryptocurrency, whether it's default encryption on devices and messaging platforms. Uh, we are moving as a country and as a world in a direction where if we don't get our act together, money, people, communications, evidence, facts, all the bread and butter for all of us to do our work will be essentially walled off from the men and women we represent. Thank you. I, I, I would just close, Mr. Chairman, in, in just uh, acknowledging that the President today uh, spoke of the, uh, the, the tragedy which occurred in Mexico where uh, uh, apparently three women and, and six children were, were brutally murdered uh, and has offered uh, our national support to help the Mexicans get to the bottom of this and, uh, and appreciate the fact that you're uh, willing to participate in that at the direction of the President and hope we will uh, find a way to uh, bring people to justice who deserve to be brought to justice and also uh, prevent events like this from happening in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.